Okay. Well, it's a beautiful day, so we're up on the studio roof. Today we'll be discussing Laura Ingalls Wilder, author of The Little House on the Prairie Books, whose name has been removed from a writing award because her books display stereotypical attitudes and contain racial language. Well, duh, of course they do. Sorry. OK, go again. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful day, so we're up on the studio roof. Today we're going to be discussing Laura Ingalls Wilder, author of The Little House on the Prairie Books, whose name has been removed from a writing award because her books display stereotypical attitudes and contain racial language. I mean, for fuck's sake, I'd be fucking amazed if they didn't, frankly. These books, they're based on the author's childhood between 1870 and 1894. That's like five years after slavery was abolished. The books were written during the Jim Crow laws. It's almost as if cultural norms aren't fixed and changed with the passage of time. Who is this helping? No one. No one needs protecting from Little House on the fucking Prairie. Or for that matter, the racially charged language of Huckleberry Finn, or To Kill a Mockingbird, or fucking... What does this achieve? Who does this help? Stop sanitising and denying the past to make yourself look good. I'm fucking... I'm sick of it. It's utter bullshit. And it's fucking everywhere you look. We live in the most inclusive, progressive, diverse, prosperous society ever in human history, yet we behave as if we've never had it so fucking bad. We're told that there is prejudice wherever you look because there aren't enough female biographies on Wikipedia or enough BAME cyclists on the road. Apparently, the biggest challenge to London cyclists is not safety, it's diversity. We used to react to prejudice. Now we actively seek it out, often where it doesn't fucking exist. Fucking, fucking Google has taken the egg out of its salad emoji to make it more inclusive for vegans. Is there a single vegan in the world that feels triggered or oppressed or unrepresented by a salad emoji with an egg in it? What does this achieve? Who does this help? My generation, right, we've, we've never really had to fight for much. Gay rights certainly has come a long way in my lifetime, but, I mean, we never had to fight for the vote. We never had to fight in a fucking war. You know, my grandmother watched the Battle of Britain taking place above her house. Nazis in planes over her house attempting to invade our country. Actual Nazis. I'm not talking Trump voters. Actual Nazis. Recently, you had Vogue magazine saying tackling women's issues today is harder than women's battle for the vote. You pampered, privately educated cunts. The suffragettes went on fucking hunger strike. Emily Davidson sacrificed her life. Wearing a Louis Vuitton black dress on a red carpet is not the same as jumping in front of a fucking racehorse. Stop fucking demonstrating how fucking worthy you are. And it's not just, it's not just, it's fucking, look at this, look at this, it's fucking everything. It's everything, right? What's this? This, the Pride fucking sponsored Costa coffee. Who does this help? Who does, I'd like a skinny latte, please, with one pump of sugar-free hazelnut syrup. Would you like it in a cup that publicly displays that you're happy with the notion of same-sex couples having the right to, I just want a fucking coffee, mate. It's 6.30 a.m. and in 20 minutes I'm scheduled to interview Amber fucking Rudd. I just need the fucking caffeine. Give me my fucking skinny latte. We don't call it a skinny latte anymore, sir, because that phrase is considered fat shaming. So I would just fuck off then. Peter Tatchell getting arrested in Russia, protesting their disgusting record on gay rights. I'm with you every step of the fucking way. Putting a rainbow on a placemat in Wagamama's. Who is that for, exactly? Or are you just cynically hijacking an entire social movement to promote your chain of restaurants by wrapping your corporate brand in rainbow-coloured virtue to help you sell dumplings? Stop politicising my dumplings! This is, this is just a corporate extension of this modern phenomenon of demonstrating how fucking right arm and fucking woke we all are. I, I see people who define themselves as anti-fascist on their Twitter profiles. Who isn't? I'm sorry, that's the default setting. It's not impressive to be anti-fascist. Imagine showing off about that. I am not a fascist. Good! What do you want, a fucking medal? Not endorsing fascism is about as common as not endorsing fingering children, OK? Can we not just work from the assumption that most people, even people we don't like, aren't fascists? 
Vice magazine recently reviewed the trailer for the new live-action remake of Dumbo and said the trailer was, and I quote, cute and heartwarming and seemingly neither racist nor terrifying. News just in, the new Dumbo film probably isn't racist. What on earth made you think it would be? This, this is what identity politics does to you. It turns your fucking head into blancmange. You can't see the world how it actually is. You see racism and oppression where there is none. A white girl singing along to Kendrick Lamar doesn't make her a racist. Let's not pretend it does, okay? That executive from Netflix who got fired last week for saying an offensive word in a meeting that was called to discuss the use of offensive words. Welcome to 2018, where context and intent are no longer required to brand your fellow citizens fucking racist. It's madness, and yet it's mainstream. It's fucking normal. The new Star Wars film drew criticism because it doesn't deal with the issue of slavery in a satisfactory manner. Shut up! I'm fucking watching Star Wars! <laughs> The film Dunkirk was criticised for not having enough women or people of colour in it. It's set in the English Channel during World War fucking two. This is the politicisation of art, which of course is the end of fucking art. And it's fucking everywhere. J.K. Rowling got a pasting from LGBT activists because Dumbledore isn't openly gay in the new Fantastic Beasts film. Is this really the height of the gay community's oppression? I don't for one second believe that it is. But if it is, the war's already been won. OK, if, if the worst thing that's happening is a wizard not being shown, taking it up to the elbow, you fucking made it. Chill out. It's all fucking good, mate. Do you really think any normal person, and when I say normal, I mean white, black, girl, boy, gay, straight, and everything in between, you know, fucking normal. Do you think any normal person really gives a fuck about this shit? Anyone normal, they just want to eat their fucking noodles, drink their skinny latte, watch their crappy kids movie, appreciate old novels written by people with different sets of values to us, and of course, speak out against racism and oppression and injustice, but where it actually exists, because there's a lot of it about. There's a lot of it in this country, but you won't find it in a novel written a hundred years ago, or on a picture of an egg, or in a movie about a flying fucking elephant. Crows? What? I've, I've never seen Dumbo. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful day, so we're up on the studio roof. Today, we're going to be discussing Laura Ingalls Wilder.